The Intel Celeron, you know that they should be usually avoided. You get entry-level performance for a very low price. But with the very first Celeron, the 266 model for slot one, Intel cut too many corners. They removed a feature that really reduced performance and yeah, they never repeated that mistake again. Intel Celeron, that gets you an entry-level processor with affordable prices, modest performance aimed at everyday tasks. In general, with most Celerons, you will get a lower frontside bus, a lower clock speed, less cores and also a smaller cache. What is cache? Level 2 cache is a high-speed memory that's located close to the processor and it's storing frequently accessed data to avoid grabbing the information from the much slower system RAM. And yeah, it means the more cache you have, the more performance. If we look at the Pentium 4, for example, a Northwood core comes with 512 kilobytes of level two cache and the Celeron only has 128. With the first Celeron, Intel unfortunately decided to remove all level two cache. So you're not getting a small amount of level two cache, you get none. And that's why the first Celerons, the one at 266 and 300, have a very limited performance. Games especially are quite sensitive to cache and that affects us for our retro gaming hobby. Here we have the test system. It's a slot one main board from AOpen, model number AX6BC. I've been using this main board on many past projects, really beautiful, with the famous Intel 440BX chipset. Two ISA slots, that's awesome for DOS gaming, for those sound cards, five PCI slots, HEP, three, SD RAM slots, we've got a module, crucial 256 megabytes. That's about perfect for Windows 98. We have two ID ports. The floppy port is in a little bit unfortunate spot. And here is the Celeron 266. We are using the ATI Radeon 9250 LE. I like using this card, it has DVI, so that makes my life easy for capturing. It is compatible with old and the newer HEP standards. It supports 16X AF for sharper textures in the games. And the game we are checking out today, it will not render correctly on a GeForce card. That's also another reason why we're using a Radeon. We have an update, good news to do with the ATI Radeon video cards under Windows 98 to display fog in games such as Thief 2. In a previous video, I got a comment from the crazy Parrot 8. He shared three registry string keys that you need to enter and then we have fog displaying correctly in Thief 2. I will have to test some more games, but that is good news because under Windows 98, out of the box, this isn't working. My favorite sound card for Windows 98, the Sound Blaster Live. It supports EAX. Let's listen to one game to show you the difference. Left, right. Left, right, left, right, left, right. EAX basically makes supported games sound more lively with better atmosphere. As always, we're using Joseph's ODG Drivers Fully Sound Blaster Live and also all the links, all the resources to the main board, to the drivers and whatnot are down below in the video description. I had some issues with the sound card. Initially it was in this PCI slot, but the interrupt ended up being shared with the USB. And as soon as you use a USB mouse, the machine would crash. So that's something to pay attention to. Basically the solution is I moved it into this PCI slot, the slot got its own interrupt and then everything was fine. For storage, we're using the GoTek USB floppy drive emulator. And then I have a 32 gigabyte SATA SSD together with the StarTech ID to SATA converter. I like to cycle through components to make sure they're working and this SSD is faulty. I ran into some issues. So back to this one and that one will be marked faulty and eventually chucked out when I do a bit more testing. In the BIOS, I like to load the turbo defaults. That gives us excellent performance. Stay away from the load setup defaults that gives us like a fail-safe uh, environment with very basic performance. Every bias is a little bit different, but I like to go into the integrated uh, onboard devices and disable resources that we don't need. For example, we don't need the serial ports, 
and we don't need the parallel ports. That frees up some, some interrupts that we can use for sound cards, for example. On a lot of older main boards, there's one setting that's quite important if you're using a USB keyboard and mouse. Look for USB keyboard and USB mouse support that needs to be enabled. Otherwise, with a USB keyboard, you will not have any input under MS-DOS. On the topic of USB input devices, sometimes after installing the chipset drivers, your USB devices are not gonna work. So it's very handy to have a PS2 keyboard or mouse ready to go, especially in the beginning when you're setting up Windows and all the drivers, just leave it plugged in. Uh, worst case, if the USB devices don't function, you can still use the PS2 input devices. If you are connecting with VGA to a modern LCD monitor, there's usually some sort of a auto setup button which calibrates the image. And you can use a checkerboard test pattern. I have some downloads on the website if that's what you after, but there's a much easier way. If you just go here, start, shut down, it will have some sort of a grid pattern in the background, hit the auto adjust button and you will have a perfectly calibrated image. Let's run some benchmarks. We have GL Quake and here we can see, well, the processor is holding everything back. We're getting basically 40 FPS across all the resolutions. We can see the same thing in incoming, but performance is even lower. Around 27 FPS is all you're gonna get. Doesn't matter what resolution. The Celeron 266 does much better under MS-DOS. Here we have 345 for 3D Bench, 227 for Chris's 3D Bench, 66 FPS for the PC Player Benchmark, 85 for Doom and 61.2 for Quake. What about power consumption? So I have a power meter which measures how much the entire system consumes and sitting idle on the desktop I measured 28 watts and running games 42 watts. And now I want to talk about a game that I really enjoyed. The game is incoming and absolutely fantastic. Had a blast playing it. So this game is from 1998. It's developed by Rage Software. They are from Liverpool, England. And in the beginning they did a heap of football in some areas, soccer games early on, and then did Incoming, Incoming Forces, Expendable, Gunmetal, Midnight GT. So a lot of games that I've been using in past projects. It's a 3D action shooter and you get to control turrets, tanks, helicopters and jets and basically you're protecting Earth against an alien invasion. The graphics are really the main highlight. Very colorful, huge explosions, there are lots of different assets in the game to keep you interested. We're also getting nice sound. Now I'm using a Sound Blaster Live which supports EAX but the game supports A3D, so with an Aureal Vortex 2, it will likely sound even better, especially if you're playing with headphones. You have a primary and secondary weapon. The primary one has unlimited ammo. The secondary one usually has a limit, for example, missiles. You uh, can, yeah, you will take damage, but you can also repair yourself by uh, landing on refueling pads and that will regenerate the health but also restock all your weapons. There's difficulty in the game, it's fairly uh, easy, I, I use the easy mode, life is challenging enough, I don't need any more virtual challenges to be honest, especially with this hobby. And on easy, the first two scenarios are pretty straightforward but with the third one, even here it starts to get a little bit difficult. There are six scenarios with different locations and each scenario has 10 phases and most of the locations are on earth but later you get to uh, play on the moon and then even attack the alien planet but i haven't gotten that far for the controls i found the joystick works the best i'm using a thrustmaster t16000m works great under windows 98 there are uh, six buttons you need to map primary and secondary and then also uh, four buttons for flying uh, forward stopping, helicopter up and down, and also strafing left, right, or rolling the jet left and right. All the gameplay is at 800 by 600 pixels, 32-bit colors. I have forced 16x AF in the driver to make the textures look nicer, and the Radeon, even the 9250, it has enough performance to use 4x AA if you like. 
There's an interesting technical aspect of this game. It will not render correctly on a GeForce. If you have a River TNT or TNT2, you will get the proper graphics, but GeForce and later cards, it will render with some errors. It has to do with color keying, whatever that is. And it will display correctly on Radeon cards, of course, also on Voodoo 3DFX cards, and I'm pretty sure on other cards like Matrox and S3. The performance was quite average. The Celeron 266, it does struggle with the game, but I still found it enjoyable. And when the game runs fairly slow, it's a little bit easier to aim. This is a game that is speed sensitive. If you have a fast machine and you have V-Sync disabled, it will run too fast, but there's an option in the game that will basically put a FPS cap, uh, lock the frame rate down, and then it's silky smooth. I might do a follow-up video where we upgrade this machine to a Pentium 2 and then test all the games again and see how they perform. I'm using the GOG version, so basically install it under Windows 11, copy the folder across. You will have to create a shortcut to the executable and add dash screen mode as a parameter. That will uh, give you a pop-up menu where you can set the resolution, otherwise it will just run at 640 by 480. However, there's an even better version out there from the Zoom platform because this is the only digital release that includes incoming subversion, which is a 1999 expansion. And I looked into that uh, a little bit more and that seems to be some sort of a community uh, pack with levels made by gamers, um, but it has the official approval from Rage Software. All the digital platform releases, unfortunately, have the music playing from audio files directly from the hard drive. That technique doesn't work under Windows 98. It expects a audio CD in the drive. So you have a couple of options. You can burn the audio tracks onto a CD, or you can head to archive.org and grab the disk images from there. But of course, you want to purchase the digital copy first. So you own the game, and then, uh, yeah, I guess it takes care of the legal issues of using games from archive.org. So all in all, I had a blast playing this game. And it's not just the graphics, it has enough going on to keep you entertained. So the scenarios are all quite different. Um, and there are enough enemies, enough ships, enough tanks, enough vehicles to keep you going. The difficulty annoys me a little bit. Um, after the third or fourth scenario, the amount of enemies you're facing, it just gets a little bit out of hand, even on easy mode. So I might have to resort to some cheats, which the game supports. But all in all, this game is awesome. I would highly recommend you grab it and install it on your Windows 98 retro PC. And I've also been playing some more of Total Annihilation. Here we're running the game at 1920 by 1080, so 1080p. Very nice that this game supports the higher resolution. I got an interesting comment from one of you asking me, ARM or Core? And at the time, I didn't know uh, how to answer that one because I wasn't really aware of the background of the game. So I downloaded the manual and had a read, and it's really quite interesting. There are basically two factions, uh, Core and ARM. Core was basically, yeah, they were running the universe and everything was good, and they were involved in scientific advancement, that was their main philosophy. And they made a breakthrough. They basically figured out how to transfer the consciousness of humans into machines and that pattern, it's called patterning. <laughs> and well, yeah, it, it allowed people to live forever basically. But then they mandated that, they made it mandatory. So every citizen of the galaxy had to go through that process. And of course, you know, not everyone wants to do that. So um, that's where the arm faction uh, got formed. They resisted and protested. And that led to a war going on for 4,000 years and using up all the resources of the galaxy. And that's basically where you come into play. So, wow. To be honest, uh, both sides sound really messed up. So you've got the core. They uh, take the human mind and imprinted into machines. And then you've got ARM, they use cloning. So they, they clone uh, their top soldiers and put them in high powered combat suits. Both sides sound a bit messed up. If I had a choice, I would 
choose another faction, natural reproduction, and just die naturally. But yeah, the game is really fun. There are so many vehicles in this game. I'm still learning all the ins and outs. And I figured out that when you, when you for example, construct some units, your commander can uh, speed up the process by assisting it. So that made the gameplay much, much easier because I was able to produce units much faster. And yeah, so far really enjoying it. I think I'm up to the fifth or the sixth mission and um, yeah, having a blast. Some issues with the sound on this machine for some reason. It, it's as if not all sound channels are playing. For example, the uh, you can't hear the weapons being fired. Uh, that's a bit weird. And maybe that has to do with the process of being too slow and the game limiting the amount of voices to uh, give you better performance. I'm not sure. The Celeron 266 is really struggling here. Despite the system requirements being quite low, talking about a Pentium or something like that, but maybe it's the higher resolution, I'm not sure. But this is definitely a game you wanna play on a faster machine and I will continue playing it, it's heaps of fun. So guys, the Intel Celeron 266 and 300, those are the first OG Celerons from Intel and yeah, because of the lack of level two cache, even for retro gaming, even uh, basic Windows 98 games, it's just, not good enough. Um, the processor launched in 1998, incoming is from the same year, total annihilation is from a year before and both of these games struggle. So you have to go back further in time, play even older games and for those purposes maybe uh, there is a, a point for the CPU but yeah I would not recommend this processor at all. Go with a Pentium 2 um, something like a 350 or 400 model should do the trick and as I said I might do a follow-up video where we upgrade the machine to a top Pentium 2 and just see how much faster uh, that processor is. The games we tried, well incoming you have noticed that I'm really enthusiastic about that one I can highly recommend it to you. Check out the Zoom platform release, uh, same process as GOG, install it on your Windows uh, 11 or Windows 10 machine and then just copy the folders across. You also need to create the shortcuts to change the resolution but otherwise it works perfectly under Windows 98. It's a big shame with the audio, with the music that that's not supported but that's just the nature of these digital platforms focusing on modern machines. Us, we as a community, we always find a way to make things work. The project all in all didn't have too many issues, some dramas with the SSD, uh, yeah, but that's just how it is. And basically I'll toss it out. So now I know this one is faulty. I have lots of other storage devices and SSDs don't cost too much these days. And with the PCI slot, double check when you turn on the machine, you get to the, uh, after the post, you get the table with the interrupts check that there's no conflict between the sound card and other uh, devices. That was my downfall initially, but you just swap it into another PCI slot and then everything works. So all in all, the Celeron 266 gets a thumbs down, not recommended even for retro gaming, just get yourself a Pentium 2. Maybe they cost a premium, but the performance will also be much, much faster. I really enjoy making these videos and it means a lot to me that you watch them and spend your time. It would mean a lot to me if you make sure your notifications are enabled. You need to click on them twice so you get all the updates. And if you're new to the channel, please subscribe, stick around. We have lots of cool content coming up. And that's it for this video. Leave some comments down below. What is your thought about Intel's first Celeron without any level two cache? What is your uh, thoughts about the Celeron range in general and um, yeah, leave a comment down below. That's it. Thank you so much for watching and I shall see you soon with another one.